So good afternoon. This is uh, Paul Fletcher, the CEO from Workforce Solutions Rural Capital Area, and uh, we're excited to uh, to host this this webinar today to talk about uh, some things going on in our area. Um, and we're very happy to have with us today um, Elva Zadeb, who's the Director of Human Resources at Atrium Hospitality, and she's also a Workforce Solutions Rural Capital Area board member. So thank you for being here with us today, Elva. Thank you. And we have Angel Contreras. He's the Human Resources Executive for Amazon, based out of San Marcos, Texas. Um, so one of the things we wanted to talk about today is the, the opportunity to talk about career transitions. Um, and as, as, as people over, over time um, start off in a certain occupation with an industry and um, over time they move up or they move over or sometimes they change industries and take their skill sets with them to a, a different kind of industry. We've, we've taken to calling that a career lattice instead of a ladder anymore. So, so, you know, sometimes you move up, sometimes you move over and up or, or just over. Um, but it's, it, it's about utilization of different skill sets uh, from one industry to another. How do those things equalize? How do they, you know, how, how, do, how are they interpreted differently by different industries? Um, so I, I uh, look forward to a great conversation here today with, with Angel and Elva, and uh, I'm sure they're looking forward to your, your questions here in a little bit. So. Uh, without further ado, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you guys uh, take, take it away. Thanks, Paul. Fantastic. Well, um, Angel, I was hoping that before we get started, you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Amazon. And then I have a list of questions ranging from what is logistics to once I'm, once I'm in logistics, how do I get promoted and what are my lattice opportunities? So we're going to start yeah. at the beginning. Who are yeah. you? Okay, so, and I'll try and keep this down to three hours because as you can see, I have a, I have a lot of gray hair. So, uh, so I've been with Amazon now for about five months. So I'm still kind of learning a lot of the processes in Amazon, but it's, it's an amazing, it's been an amazing ride so far. Prior to Amazon, I was with uh, GE Aviation for a cumulative of about 12 years, all in human resources in various locations throughout the, uh, the U.S., multiple states. Um, and then for a, a two-year period, I was a chief human resources officer for a uh, Rockford school district in Northern Illinois. I also worked for uh, Wrigley, chewing gum company out of Chicago, uh, briefly. Um, I also worked for a plastics company and then a food processing company. And actually, it's a, 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 a privately owned uh, food processing company. They're a supplier for McDonald's. They actually make the hamburger patties. It is 100% beef. I've seen the process, so enjoy your, enjoy your burgers if that's what you're into. Uh, and then prior to that, that's basically my HR career. Prior to that, I was in the Navy for eight and a half years where I was a, a corpsman. Uh, if you just don't happen to know what a corpsman is, it's like a combat medic. So I got to do a lot of uh, uh, kind of weird emergency medical type services uh, without having a medical license. So uh, I like the joke that it prepared me for the world of HR. That sounds kind of scary, <laughs> but I think you're right. It's super exciting. Um, I'm glad you have this wealth of experience that you're ready to share with everyone here. You know, we have a lot of people here that um, are coming from retail and hospitality. And as everyone knows, you know, it's, it's been a very tough time in those worlds. The, the jobs that we know are limited and often not available. And so a lot of us are having to learn. Okay. Alpha, I'm sorry, we're, we're having trouble hearing you. You're very soft. Oh no, okay, let me see. Okay, is that any better? Can you hear me now? <laughs> a little, it just sounds a little muffled like you're in the, in the far, far away. Not exactly sure on that one, Kara. <laughs> Let's see. All right, tech people, tell me what's going on. I, I wouldn't know. I'm not the tech person. Brian, do you, <laughs> I'm the opposite of the tech person. Brian, would you have any idea? I can I can hear the questions. So as long as oh, people. Okay. I guess uh, uh, let's, right, let's let's keep that. going. Let's see. Well, maybe it'll correct itself. You never know. Okay, so I'm gonna yell. <laughs> what is logistics? Okay, so great question to begin with. Uh, so my entire career, like I just mentioned, has primarily been in manufacturing, and then here more recently with logistics. But uh, the textbook answer is 
uh, and I'm going to try and keep this simple for myself, and then I'll give you uh, a kind of my the way I look at it, uh, personalize it a little bit. So I hope maybe that'll help everyone that might be listening as well. Uh, logistics is basically the coordination of a lot of moving parts, and and so that's the initial one. But if you think about it, a product comes in, it needs to come in. So there's some inbound transportation logistics that needs to happen or coordination. Uh, something may or may not happen to the product itself. If this is the product, it's coming to a, a warehouse, for example. It might be considered inventory for a period of time. It might be considered a, 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 a longer term you know, inventory or a short term inventory. Uh, it also needs to, again, either be modified in one way, shape or form or in Amazon packaged effectively in the appropriate size boxes. So all those things need to be taken into account. Uh, there's a, a how you handle it process. There's a, a order fulfillment process. Uh, all the inventory management that I just kind of briefly hit on. Uh, the demand planning, for example. Are we sending it directly to the customer or is it going to another fulfillment center? So there's a lot of different pieces around the word logistics. I don't, I didn't, I don't wanna overcomplicate it, but I don't wanna oversimplify it either. The way I personally look at logistics and how I kind of got to started learning about it when I was in school is think about it like when you're at home, you are going grocery shopping, for example. One, you gotta figure out how you're gonna get there. You gotta figure out which store or multiple stores, if you're gonna go to multiple stores, uh, you gotta figure out what it is, from a planning perspective, what is it you're going to purchase? So uh, my wife is, is in charge of that. She's a CEO here at home. So she does all these logistics around that. She'll know from uh, menus for the week, so which means what type of ingredients, what type of, uh, uh, what else is going to be added. She'll know things to buy that are uh, perishable, things that are non-perishable, which again would be kind of more inventory related. You can keep those in the pantry a little bit longer. And then the delivery, I think where I kick in is when, when, when I need to turn the grill on. And that's when I got to make sure that the grill is clean, that the, we got enough gas. So again, simplified version, but logistics is the coordination of all these things to, uh, to, to, to move what product or modify a product and get it to the end customer. Uh, and it's all confined to something that's very important, which is uh, time, because you, you can't make more time. Wow, that's a great, um, uh, that's a great way of summarizing it and um, giving us an example of something that we all, I think, know on a daily basis. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for that. Oh, sure, know. sure thing. So, well, given that, then what are the roles that are most in demand at Amazon and in the, in the industry as well? Yeah, so again, I don't want to simplify it, but uh, Amazon, uh, even during this troublesome year with everything that's going on with COVID, we've actually grown. In July, I think we went over a million employees globally. And so I think there's uh, tons of opportunities from entry level positions, uh, which we call tier ones. Basically, you're, you're there moving the product uh, and, and it's a lot of automation that's happening, obviously, within Amazon. So um, there's, there's the, the machinery and the, the automation that actually brings the product to the individual and then the individual takes it from there and does a lot of those things. So those are, again, some of the entry level positions. Uh, but then there's also a lot of the ancillary type of positions and support functions, uh, human resources, for example. There's finance, there's marketing, there's IT. Uh, so there's a lot of different growth paths. And I think we do a pretty good job of promoting from within. So there's uh, those avenues, once you get in your foot in the door, that then you can pursue those types of career paths, assuming, you, again, you, 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 you fit the skill sets, you uh, are able to uh, uh, do the job, first of all, first and foremost, and then actually, uh, if you maybe have a degree, a certification, so then you start applying for these positions internally. But right now, uh, again, if the positions are open, there's, there's so many and it's so broad uh, that there's just a lot of different opportunities uh, that I, I know we'll talk a little bit more about the different different ones or the criteria and the skill sets, but there's just a lot of opportunities right now. Uh, you know, one of the reasons I, I moved on from, from my past position to Amazon because there was so much growth and so much opportunities. And like I said, I've only been there for about five months, but we're already talking about my next move for, for early next year, as soon as early next year. So we have a, a, a lot of opportunities here in, in the Amazon world. I know that's exciting for a lot of us to hear without a doubt. Um, and congratulations on that possible movement. 
Yeah, thank you. What are the what are the skills that you know hospitality and retail folks like ourselves can bring to the table and transfer into these positions with? Yeah, it's a great question. I think hospitality, uh, I would say hospitality, retail industry, you bring a lot of uh, attention to detail mindset. You know, things have to be in the right place uh, type of mindset, which is all fits in very nicely to a logistics or manufacturing environment. Because uh, if you've heard the word lean, you know, lean manufacturing, for example, lean Six Sigma, all those things, you have to bring in those skill sets. Uh, usually we have to train people, but, if, but I think that people in the coming from hospitality, from retail, already kind of have that mindset that uh, that they uh, again the attention to detail the being able to accomplish a task in a, in a shorter period of time than is even required at times so you become very effective very efficient in your role those are the types of skill sets that make people very successful within Amazon uh, like I said we're all constrained by one very important thing which is time we, we can't make more of it so if you can find a way to save time in, in the processes that we're doing day in and day out and speak up when you see an opportunity those are the skill sets that we're looking for and I think they would translate very nicely from hospitality and retail where that's kind of their main focus a lot of times into into a logistics environment hmm, I think I think you're right and you know looking at our industries um, you know it's go time 24 7 you know for the minute you get to work to the that's floor, right you're on the stage you or go whether you're front yeah. of the house or back of the house um, and when you were speaking on um, efficiency versus effectiveness, you know, we all know we can wash one dish at a time, which is efficient, but not very effective, or we can load 50 into the machine and let it go. That's right. Probably a lot more satisfying in the end as well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And a little bit easier. <laughs> it is. So I, I understand that's really, really great. Um, can you tell us about opportunities for people over 50? People over 50. Well, I, I know I look pretty young and vibrant, but uh, I'm, I'm probably closer to that number than, than you might think. Uh, maybe we'll have the chat start guessing my age. But uh, so I, so for, it's, it's, inter it's an interesting question because coming from an HR per perspective, we don't look at age. It's, it's, it, it might sound cliche, but we're, we're looking at people that can actually just do the job whatever position you apply for we're not we're not looking at uh, a certain age criteria but i will say i think we have a, a broad diverse group of, of of individuals at the location that i'm at or probably throughout amazon that can again as long as you can do the job age is age is not important and and, and from what i've seen i think we've gotten a lot of people that are probably over that age uh, if i had to guess that are really good employees that they just know and 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 the good thing is we actually hire for people uh, hire people for what's in between your ears not so much what 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 you're fully capable of or or looking at an age uh, as a number again if you can do the job and we're pretty clear about how, how, what what is the requirements what are the skill sets and again so we're not looking at at, at that as a criteria for hiring employees but uh, I know we do have a broad spectrum uh, age group. Uh, we have a lot of college students from Texas State that work there for us, uh, but it's it's across the board. So I would say don't let that number limit you in any way, shape, or form from even applying. Awesome, awesome. Um, well, uh, can you tell us about what the opportunities are for someone who has um, a disability, um, whether it be you know physical or a type of cognitive impairment? Yeah, so similarly to the age thing, that's not something that we look at. The, the criteria is, can you do the job? If you can do the job, uh, but we do have some, uh, again, some individuals that maybe need an accommodation that we've been able to provide, that they're, that they're able to still do the job with, the, with, with whatever accommodation that we're providing. I know we have translators on site, so we have a lot of people that are, are you know, people got to learn how to sign. Uh, unfortunately, uh, due to COVID, we've uh, stopped doing in-house uh, sign language training because I, I kind of wanted to learn some. Uh, and hopefully once this, this, we get past this, that we'll start this all over again and, and I'll pick up some sign language because right now I, I, I think I know thank you and that, that's about it. But I think we have a lot of people that, uh, for example, are, they might be on the spectrum, but they do really, really good work. Oh no, did we lose him? <laughs> I'm 
not sure. Or it can Uh oh. Let's see. He's in and out on my end. Thank you. How about now? There you are. Yeah. Is that better? Better. Okay, so I guess we're just dealing with technical issues these days, right? That's the life, day in the life. This is good stuff. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, and we also got a question in the chat about a 30 to 45 minute assessment test. Is that, what? what is, what is that, uh, do you know what that is for? What's the requirements essentially with that? Yeah, I, it could be for one of our, uh, uh, like the driving positions that you have to be assessed on. Uh, but for the other ones, uh, literally you can, for entry level positions, you can apply online and then you'll go through our, our workforce staffing uh, department. They might have like a written assessment of some sort, uh, but we, we don't, at, once they're past the workforce staffing aspect, uh, then they come into the, to the HR functionality and, and we do the process of doing, uh, you know, bringing them on as a seasonal employee and then eventually doing a conversion uh, I see another question popped in for HR. For HR jobs, uh, I think there's like a written assessment potentially, but then we do panel interviews. So, so someone coming into the HR field will have to be interviewed by, by an HR person, for example, by a recruiter, by someone in operations, and, and one other function. It, it, that could be limited, depending on what, 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 uh, what level you're applying for in HR. And that's pretty, that's an industry standard for, for a lot of our larger companies in general throughout yeah. the region, that's, just to that's... make sure you're at a certain, a certain level. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, continue, Elva. <laughs> and thanks for the tips in the chat about my um, mic. I hope you can hear me better now. Yes. All right. <laughs> now the fun part. We've gone through, we've done our resume, we've finessed it, you know, changed a little vocabulary in order to meet the demands of logistics. How do we ace the interview? How do you ace the interview? <laughs> okay, <clears throat> I'll, 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 give you, uh, I'll give you some insights on Amazon, which really isn't a secret because they, they actually, the recruiters actually give all this information out. We want people to come in and put your bet, best foot forward and present yourself well. Then I'll give you some of my added uh, kind of just from the almost 20 years of HR experience. I know I don't look that old, but uh, I have about 20 years of HR experience. I'll tell you some, some th tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that, uh, that can almost guarantee you that uh, a win. Uh, so for Amazon, if uh, first thing I would tell you to do is, is do, you, do, your own, do your homework. Research the company. Again, our, our recruiters, we, we, we want to be, be transparent. We send all the applicants uh, links. This is our, these are our Amazon uh, leadership principles, for example. There's 14 of them. Study them. Uh, secondly, we tell them when you answer your questions, uh, put them in a star format. STAR, the acronym STAR, S-T-A-R. So when you're answering a question, hopefully you have some good examples, first of all, because that's, that's on you to bring the good examples. But the S in STAR stands for situation. So talk through whoever it is you're interviewing with, talk through what the situation was that you were going through at that moment. T is tasks. So what tasks were you involved in or did you actually do? And then A is for actions. What actions were, were taken by you, your team, by others, for example. And then R is uh, the important part that a lot of people tend to leave off. What were the results of, of everything in that whole scenario that you're talking through? Uh, the results are critical. Even if the results were we did not accomplish the goal. They're, they're still pretty important because it shows the, 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 the interviewer that you fully understand what happened throughout that process. And if you're staging it under situation, task, actions, and then results, and then if, the, again, you did not accomplish the task at hand, you can always add one more piece, which is what did you learn from that? And you can do that even if you did accomplish the task because sometimes uh, when, when, when someone tells me how great they did on something, I like to throw in the final question is, what did you learn from that? 
and if you stumble on that one, then I kind of question a little bit, you know, your whole story. But but I think for the most part, people tend to you can you can tell by how they're answering. And I think again, from an Amazon perspective, we're just trying to help people structure their answers so that they're effective and not all over the place. I I think we understand that not everyone is a pro at interviewing, and and you can get nervous, you can get a dry mouth, and you can you know whatever else you may not be thinking clearly. So stick to that star acronym to format your answers and your golden okay that's that's the Amazon way from from my perspective I, I would say just a couple of other things I would add to that format is number one be yourself be prepared be yourself because if you go into an interview and you're trying to be something you're not trust me I'm gonna be able to tell an experienced interviewer can tell immediately to uh, present your your information positively Again, if the if the outcome was was not great, still you can present it positively. Um, so be yourself, be positive, c come across in the interview as you really want to work for this organization. That really comes across. It's it's hard when people are faking it. You can you can tell. I mean, it's it's just too obvious. So you, you stick with those things. And and the last thing I'll say is uh, personally, once you're kind of either at this point or even in the door. Is, and this is important because everyone has ultimate control over this, is have a good attitude. That's it. It's, it's a, I would rather have somebody who has low skill sets but a great attitude. I know we can develop those individuals than, than, than vice versa. I can't do a whole lot with people with very negative attitudes. Uh, so those are some of my personal takeaways and, and again, some Amazon tips and tricks. But again, we don't, we don't hide any of these things. We provide all this information to all the candidates. We want everyone to do well. I love that. Thank you. That's a that's a great manner for an interview process as well. You know, um, I've interviewed many people, and oftentimes they're not prepared, like you said. But sometimes they're just lacking in examples, and they don't know what is a good example to bring to the table for an interview. And um, sometimes, in order to get them thinking about it, I remind them, "Well, tell me about what you do at home. Tell yeah. me about some wins at home." Tell me about the best time you volunteered and what you did and how that worked out. And that kind of gives them some other examples that they can use um, in the interview if they don't feel like their work history is that strong. And then we kind of yeah. live that way. So that's something for, for everyone to remember. I mean, right now, volunteerism is an important place. And if you haven't been working in a little while and you can't think of those examples right away because it's been a long time since you've done that, go create some. No. Yeah, absolutely. I think you, you can not just answer it from your work history, but as you said, volunteerism or even some of your hobbies. People have some pretty amazing hobbies, whether, you know, computer uh, that they just do on the side, you know, mechanical interests. Um, and, and I've heard some really good answers, not even related to work, but enough uh, on what they do and their interests where usually your passion really comes out when you're answering that way. And if you can structure it in that same pattern, you're going to be fine. Wonderful. Okay, so we're there. We have the job. Um, you know, hospitality and retail, um, they have a, a history of being lenient with things like absenteeism, tardiness, etc. cetera. Um, many of our people come from various worlds and, and we give them opportunities, maybe more than necessary oftentimes. But when we've got a great worker, we extend. I know that that's a little bit different with logistics as a whole. Can you tell us about that and what people can bring to the table there? Yeah, so I think probably a standard process with, with all logistics and, and I think, um, you know, so you get your personal time, you get your vacation time, just like any organization, but we also offer uh, uh, UPT or unpaid time because we realize that at times the, the, the work can be a little bit repetitive and redundant and sometimes people just need extra time. So it's basically time that you can take off and, and it's unpaid and you don't get penalized for it. Now, uh, again, it's not unlimited though. So it is, it is, there is a cap. And then every, I think once a quarter, it gets refreshed and you get X number of hours of unpaid time. But I, I do think that um, there's probably some individuals that just burn through their personal time, burn through their vacation time, and now they're burning through their unpaid time. At that point in time, like any organization, we just gotta hold people accountable. 
So if you're going to continue to miss work and be absent and accumulate uh, points or, you, you know, that I think we just hold people accountable. So, but I think we're pretty lenient and understanding for the most part. There's a lot of uh, technological advancements. Um, you can do a lot of uh, you know, unpaid time or personal time uh, remote. We have an app where people can kind of submit for all that and go through your managers. Um, so I think it's, I think it's, it's may, I, don't, I don't want to know uh, compared to leniency, hospitality or, or, or retail, but I think we're, we're fair across the board. Uh, and, and in some ways you probably do see people taking advantage of it a little bit. And, 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 and again, but I think people are held accountable, um, for the most part. All right. Well, what, what I see is from where we see leniency, you have a process, which is called unpaid time, which is, you know, a fantastic tool and just something for people to get accustomed to, um, in, in a new format. And I, I think that's wonderful. Thank you for that. Thank you for that yeah. explanation. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're there. We're doing great on the job. We, we're, we're smiling at work, I hope. Um, and, and things are, are looking great. Um, can you tell us about, you know, how do we how do we promote it? Is there a performance evaluations process? Uh, how is it determined? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a great question because yeah, once you're there after a while, you're like, okay, what, what else? Hopefully, uh, and, and I know Karen knows I say this a lot, is I, I look for people that have three qualities. One, you're smart. Two, you're hungry. And three, you, you're humble. So you're okay in saying, I don't know these things and I need to learn these things. Uh, and you're constantly raising your hand, you know, what's next can you teach me something else be 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 intellectually curious about the 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 overall business i think i've seen some people that came in as a, a tier one employee and within three months they're already uh, uh either learning ambassadors they're 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 holding other positions training others already and so again that just shows that you're hungry that you're that you're smart that you're asking you're you're engaging with your your leaders I think sometimes people decide I just need to put my head down, focus, do my job, and, and that's that. But uh, but I think you need to be mindful of the fact that it's a large organization. There's tons of opportunities, so you got to be curious about what's going on and curious with for your own uh, growth, career opportunities, and and just raise your hand. Uh, we do a lot of internal promotion. I think the vast majority of our, uh, I would say, I don't want to put a number in there, but I, the vast majority of them are homegrown promotions from within or our frontline leaders. And that says a lot about an organization. I don't know that we, we boast enough about that. And so I think that that's important uh, to know that those opportunities are there. Uh, but, but I will say, going back to the interview process, if, if you, you're being yourself, you're, you're genuine, you're, you're curious, you're hungry, you, you had a great attitude, those factors are only going to help you. Now, you take those things off the table, I don't see you growing and evolving very much or being the first person that people think of when there's a promotional opportunity. So you got to be able to, uh, again, put your best foot forward day in and day out and, and just be curious, raise your hand. How do I learn that? How do I become this role? How do I become that role? And go talk to those people. If you see that they're in a certain role, uh, ask them about it. You might say, you know what, I don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> or, you know what, I'm, I really want to do that. How do I, how do I get there? Uh, you know, the first thing I did was build my internal network, start reaching out to uh, people that have been with Amazon for a period of time. They understand the process. And, and I asked them the same questions. You know, walk me through your career. How did you get to where you're at? And, and, and listening to them, I kind of know, okay, here's kind of where I'm at in that, in that stage of development. Here's, I need to do these things as well and continue to grow and learn. Uh, just don't ever stop. Fantastic. Um, we have a question here. It asks, um, are there work from home opportunities within the industry? Yeah, so that's a great question, especially this day and age, right? Uh, so as you can see from the background, uh, I'm at home today. Uh, so we do have uh, certain roles, certain positions, you can get away with it. Uh, not day in and day out. Uh, so from time to time, I'll do a, a day remote work uh, where I think it's going to be more efficient, less distractions. I don't have to wear a mask at home all day long, those types of things. You know, we hire a lot of uh, engineers, a lot of, a lot of uh, IT, a lot of programmers, uh, and some of those can work from home. 
not exclusive, but uh, some roles you can. Uh, some folks that are be able to able to use uh, these these types of mechanisms to to have their meetings, conversations, and and manage their employees remotely. We're finding more and more these days. Um, if there's any one good thing that comes out of this COVID thing is that we're realizing what roles can and can't be done remote. And which I think is a good thing. Uh, so at the end of the day, as long as you have good internet and you're, you're tech savvy like, like we are and not having issues, you can probably work from home. Uh, human resource is a little bit difficult to do it day in and day out. Uh, sometimes uh, our roles require us to be there. Uh, same with engineers. And so, but there are a lot of, you know, marketing. Uh, I just, I, there's just so many opportunities right now. Uh, people that are currently working remote well because of the necessity of this. But I think we're also, like I said, we're discovering that well, why don't we just keep them remote? It would save costs. We don't have to build new buildings, offices, uh, you know, climate, you know, make sure the temperature is okay, things like that. All those expenses could be eliminated. So I think we're going to discover there's more and more. And I'm just talking about the fulfillment centers, the logistics side of it, all the other businesses that, that Amazon have, uh, about those lend themselves uh, as well to a lot of different uh, remote work opportunities. What examples do you have of those businesses? Uh, like uh, AWS, for example, they're, you know, obviously data uh, analytics, uh, those folks sit anywhere in the world that they can, and, and they just have meetings like Zoom. Uh, we use our own internal one, but uh, since we're on Zoom, I'll, I'll, I'll say Zoom. Um, but so there's that, that business alone, uh, but, but more and more some positions are popping up that if you're uh, a regional uh, over, over a certain number of people that you could work from home. And again, as long as you're uh, still, they're still, your teams are still accomplishing their goals and you can manage them effectively, then, then those opportunities uh, are, are there. Thank you. Um, it looks like we have someone who would like to reach out to you after the Zoom call. Um, what method should they contact you? Uh, I would say uh, if you're on LinkedIn, you know, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, uh, that's probably the best and quickest way. Um, if uh, my email I think is on there, my personal email uh, is also on there. You can reach out to me there. And I added a note that, that they can send questions to me and we'll, we'll pass them along if, if anything. So, yeah, thank you, Kara. No, no worries. Just so you're not flooded. <laughs> um, tell us about training. Training in general. Uh, so it's, uh, and again, it depends on what position you're applying for uh, and what roles, but the training is pretty extensive. Even, even for, for me, when I first got there, the first week we call, uh, um, basically you're out on the shop floor. So you so I worked in different areas. Uh, I, you know, saw the products. I learned how the conveyor systems work. I learned, you know, how the, the mechanisms, uh, the, the automation process, because it, 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 we try and make it very user friendly, but there is a learning curve for everybody. I think after the, the my week of being on the shop floor, I think I think the general consensus was I should stick with my career and stay in HR, stay off the floor as much as possible. But but we take a we take a a long opportunity to make sure that people have uh, the opportunity to be successful. It, again, I'm talking entry level type positions. You would come in, you know, you're in the stow area, for example, where again the, the robotics are bringing these these large. Uh, um, Bin, the, these large bins to you basically where your workstation is and so then the camera the the, um, the the monitor itself tells you what bin to look into it has a picture of the item and so it's they make it so user friendly so you, you take the item out you ensure that it's the right thing you you scan it you put it in another bin and it's off to its location it's going through the the maze right uh, of conveyor belts at our location we have about 16 miles of, of conveyor belts uh, throughout the entire facility so it's a it's a it's again it's a lot of automation but i don't, I don't want anyone to ever think that the automation is going to eliminate jobs if anything there's if there's a robot there's usually a human attached to that robot in one way shape or form so it's not eliminating positions it's actually creating more work um, because at the end of the day the, the robot's not doing everything a to z Okay, at one point in time, the human factor has to kick in and we have to make the ultimate decision. Because believe it or not, sometimes what you see on the monitor and what you're, what you're grabbing may not match the numbers that are, that are there. And that's where, again, there's another option where an operator would be able to 
to click a button and someone else would come and, and problem solve the issue before it goes too far down the stream. Um, and and there is, there's definitely some rates that need to be maintained. So as you're learning and you're getting quicker and you're more effective in your role, um, they, they, they you start to obviously improve your rates. Now then there's the stage two where, let's say your rates just aren't uh, improving fast enough. There's a bit of a, there's a bit of a seek to understand what's happening, a discussion, there's a retraining that's done. And, and I think I mentioned that the position of learning ambassadors earlier, those individuals are the ones that have mastered these tasks to the point where they are now teaching all the new people. And sometimes when there's a retrain, a uh, person that needs to be retrained, they will go back and retrain that person, or it could be a different learning ambassador because you know people learn at different paces and adults are, in my opinion, a little bit trickier than, than kids teaching. Uh, we have some things that are already burned into how we do things. And so you have to take maybe a different approach. Uh, but again, we're trying to, to set everyone up for success. And when you do take on a different role, the process kind of starts over again. So you might have to shadow somebody for a period of time. You will then hopefully become good enough to that they're, they're shadowing you, making sure that you're doing the job correctly. And then eventually the next phase is hopefully you become a learning ambassador and you help train all the new people so that the internal knowledge stays within and the, the good folks that are experts can then train all the new folks that are hopefully someday going to be experts as well. Nice. Perfect. Perfect. I love the learning ambassador system. Um, so I'm in logistics and um, what are my career opportunities now that I'm there? What's my career lives look like? Uh, so that's a tricky question because I think that always entails uh, a bit of a self-reflection. You know, what is it you want to do? Do you want to stay in operations? There's still a, a lot of uh, opportunities there. You could definitely do the learning ambassador for a period of time. You could be a, 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 a what we call a, a PA. Um, then you could be a, an area manager. Then again, after time, you could be um, uh, an ops manager. Uh, and so again, if you want to stay the operations track, you can do that. Um, some folks uh, that I know we've hired from the shop floor into uh, um, what we call them OAs, or operations admins, which technically fall under HR. And those folks will someday be the HR assistants who then will be senior HR assistants and HRBPs. You know, if you really enjoy the field of HR and that's what you want to do, and let's say you're going to school for that, and that tends to be your passion, there are those opportunities as well. Um, but again, you can, maybe your passion is IT. We've also grown some recently internally within IT, uh, but there's finance, um, there's just, it, it really just depends on what you want to do. Uh, we also have some that uh, have recently started up some um, uh, apprenticeship programs. So one of them is uh, a mechatronics uh, one, which is, it sounds kind of funny because, uh, but, but, but I've heard of this program years ago and it's funny that we're now starting to take grasp of it. Mechatronics, basically mechanical and engineering kind of mushed together because uh, like I said, we have a lot of uh, automation, a lot of uh, uh, engineering type uh, uh, roles and machinery that needs to be looked at and, and trained and we're finding that we don't find a lot of these people out just any everywhere so we have to build this uh, apprenticeship program and then internally people apply for it and if you meet that criteria then you then we're basically paying you to go to school and get certified so that we can then rehire you basically you, you don't leave as an employee but you're being paid to go to school as an Amazon employee, then you come back in and we put you in these dedicated roles to work on the actual pieces of equipment. That is, that is, wow. We've got a couple of questions going on that one right now. Um, let's see, I'm going to come back to that question. Let's see. Um, let's see, is Megatronics apprenticeship opportunity available in Central Texas? There, there actually happens to be one, I think, well, I might speak out of turn. I know the, the one that we're currently sending some folks to is, is in the Dallas area. So I don't know if there's one here locally, the San Antonio or type area, but uh, that, that I think would be ideal for us as well. But I don't know if there's a school that has that we've partnered with. There could be a program that maybe we're not aware of and we haven't formed a partnership just yet mm -hmm. that we could potentially send people to. But I know for sure the one that we're currently looking at is uh, in the Dallas area. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, of course, if someone were part of that program, transferability exists, doesn't it? 
Yeah, absolutely. So we have a lot of um, fulfillment centers uh, is, is again where I'm at. So I'll focus on answering it that way. There's a fulfillment center we call them, it's a launch. Okay, so if you want to go be a part of a launch, you apply, you know, internally, and then you're sent and, and again, you're paid for and you get a per diem and you go and help that new fulfillment center basically open and launch. And so you're there for I don't know, three months, could be six months. And and then once let's say you enjoy it then you would submit for an internal transfer and then you could be relocated and sent there and that's where you work now and so there's so many fulfillment centers popping up all over the place that uh, those opportunities i'm always amazed at the emails that come through for uh launch uh opportunities you know to go do, would you like to be a part of a fulfillment center launch and people are applying and and again, it's good to see them go and, and grow their careers basically. And then they, then they talk and brag about the different locations that they've helped launch or, or that they've actually worked at and they take pride in that, which is perfect. Right, right. I know in retail and hospitality, you know, a lot of superstars Similar. came from launch teams. Yeah, that's right. Understanding of the position is exciting. Um, yeah. So someone is asking here, is there a particular salary range for positions, i.e. entry level? Um, and then they go on to ask for HR entry versus senior HR person. So uh, I guess yeah. we'll start with salary range for line level entry. There are, there are salary ranges. Uh, I will say they're, they're, they're broad. So it just depends on your level of experience, uh, your education, you know, what you're bringing to the table. Entry level positions, uh, I, I think they're very competitive for the area. Uh, I, I do think uh, that Amazon brings a unique perspective to compensation overall uh, because we look at the big picture. Certain positions would be eligible for RSUs or, uh, you know, restricted stock, restricted stock units. RSUs, so you would be able to, that's a part of your compensation, base pay, and then the full benefits, and 401k is very robust as well. So I think uh, coming into HR, uh, to HR, to, to Amazon, I think it's a, it's a very competitive process uh, compensation-wise. Um, again, if you're able to do the job and be, are successful, the opportunities are boundless, but I do think that people are very, fairly compensated and, and you don't rarely see people complaining too much about that. Great answer. Tough question. Great answer. <laughs> All right. Do we have any questions out there that I've missed? Kara, are you seeing any? No. So just to give you an idea, I think I said in July, we, we globally, Amazon exceeded the 1 million employees uh, globally. Uh, and I started uh, at Amazon, like I said, late, late May. And when I started, there was probably 2,500 full-time employees. And just in the time that I've been there, we've converted so many seasonals that we're now at about 4,500 uh, full-time employees. And, and we, we, we augment it with some more seasonals and, and I'm sure there'll be an opportunity where we convert more people. Uh, so I think just, just to give you an example of the growth that we've had just in the short period of time that I've been there to quickly hire full-time Amazon employees, you know, again, with full benefits, 401k, everything in a five month period that I've been there, 2000 employees that we've converted. Wow. Wow. Well, yeah. out of curiosity, how many people are, employed at the San Marcos Center? It's, we're at about 4,500 right now, wow. full-time employees. Amazing. Um, you, you, you mentioned seasonal a couple of times. Um, can you tell us what the time period looks like for a seasonal employee to be able to go to part-time, you know, all things being successful? Yeah, so it, it, it really depends on the, uh, the time that you join and really what's going on with the business. I think what, what led to uh, this vast ramp up that, that I just talked about was because when I first joined, we, I think Amazon at that time had said that the prime week was uh, kind of just postponed. And so once they kind of knew that, yes, we're going to have prime week, we just don't know when that's going to be. So we needed to quickly start converting individuals. And once it was established that it was going to be October, uh, 
the prime week and hopefully everyone listening did their prime shopping i know i'm still getting packages coming in probably today on that but once we established that then we were able to quickly start converting people in preparation for this and also in preparation for the holidays which we call the peak season basically for us you know thing day after thanksgiving uh through almost the end of uh december our prime shopping days and so that gets really full for us. Whether we'll have, whether we prepared enough already <clears throat> with the number of folks that we have um, is uh, to date for the rest of this year might still be debatable, but we obviously are always having uh, some transition, uh, attrition I should say, which leads to more conversions. So uh, long answer, but I think the, the short answer is it, it, uh, we try not, we try to convert within 90 days generally speaking, but it's not uncommon. And some people are okay being seasonal because there's, it works with their work-life balance. It works with their school schedule, for example. And so they tend to stay on longer as a seasonal. You just can't go over a year and typically around the 11 month mark. Uh, and that's for different reasons, you know, for co-employment type issues and, and things like that. But we typically like to say, if, if you're gonna be here that long, we might as well convert you and make you a full-time employee and give you all the benefits and everything else that it comes with. But some people, again, they, they like either the seasonal work or even part-time work um, because again, it just works with their work-life balance. And if they're in school, I know, like I said, there's a lot of students that work there that they may just work part-time. They may just work Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Okay. Wow. Um, with, um, you know, um, the entry into logistics, you know, once someone has gone from seasonal to full-time, whether it be Amazon or any other company, what are, what should they expect? And, and I'm using all of your experience on this one. Okay. Um, what should they expect from a great company? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it, I had the fortunate uh, experience of working for some great companies. You know, I mentioned who I worked for, and I think they are great. I think what makes Amazon great <clears throat> is that we live and breathe our values, our, our leadership principles, and it's ingrained into everything that we do. If someone's going to get promoted, it's because they're exhibiting those uh, leadership principles. If someone's going to get a reward for something, it's because they exhibited one of those leadership principles. Uh, I think our leaders have to uh, and and do walk the talk, you know, and 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 live and breathe our principles and treat people in in the right way according to our principles. And I think that those are basically our principles are, is our north star is what keeps us on track to make sure that we are who we are. Uh, you know, one of our principles is uh, bias for action. You know, don't be afraid to fail. Take action. Better, it, it's better to fail than to not do anything, not to just sit around and don't take action. It's, it's uh, one of Jeff Bezos' things is, is it's better, it's more expensive to not, to, take, to, to not do something than to try a few things, fail on a few things, and move on. Keep getting better at what you do. Uh, and that's just one of them. Again, there's 14 principles. Um, and so I think that, that that's what, and again, that's the pattern that I see throughout my career is that uh, from, the, from the Navy, you know, Navy's values, honor, courage, and commitment. Those stuck with me through my entire career. Um, Wrigley had theirs. The school district had theirs. GE have, has their GE beliefs. And so I think it's important that every organization have these uh, anchors these North stars that you can always kind of revert back to that. If things aren't going right, you, 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 you pull them out, look at them again and say, okay, here's where we're at. I think that's what makes a, a company great. In my opinion is that they, they, they say these things, they mean it, they live and breathe them day in and day out. And they expect our employees to do the same thing. That's wonderful. So, you know, one of the, that's another similarity between logistics and similar, um, retail and hospitality. You know, one of the things that we ask our professionals, if you see something, fix it. Your guests yeah. are counting on you and looking forward to a good experience that only you can give them. The building is the building. It's the person that works within the building that makes it special. So yeah. a lot of you folks out there have some great examples for how you've done exactly that in the past. Please use those in your interviews. Those are valuable. It may seem little to you that you know the steak was well done when it should have been medium rare, but it's a big deal that you fixed it and how quickly you fix it and what you did to fix it. Whether it be, you know, you sent it back to the kitchen or you asked a chef to come out and ensure that when the 
steak was delivered, it was actually to the standard that was preferred by the guest. Just my HR pitch on that one. I have yeah. a couple of questions here. Um, let's see. Um, I hope I'm reading this right. It says, so Amazon FC units participate in the Pathways program. Um, how do others with degrees prior to being hired transition to management? Ooh. Uh, let me let me make sure I understand that Amazon. I can see it now. You need yeah. to participate in the Pathways program for those with MBAs. How do others with degrees prior to being hired transition into management? Um, so again, once you're in, and if you either have a degree uh, or if you currently have a degree, you can apply for any position that opens up internally. So that's an, an easy path. But if you're currently working for towards a degree and you happen to be a, an Amazon employee. Uh, you can apply for it, but ideally, you know, once you complete it, it's probably gonna, it's probably gonna look better um, and transition. Because again, like I mentioned, there's a couple of folks that I'm thinking off the top of my head that recently uh, transitioned into the IT world. It's because they either had a degree or completed a degree while at Amazon, and then they were uh, able to apply and got the roles. So, I mean, it's not that difficult, and and we communicate to. Uh, uh, per, pretty periodically because we know we do have a lot of folks that are on the shop floor, you know, that came in entry level roles that have degrees and we want them to be successful and grow if they want uh, opportunities and, and, and potentially a different career track. Uh, so we make them aware of these internally. Nice. Um, we have someone here who's an innovator and I love this. They are um, basically asking about the relationship between um, Amazon and Gary Job Corps. Have you um, began a learning um, uh, partnership with them yet? Uh, you know, I don't. Uh, I saw that pop up, and I don't. I don't recall seeing uh, that partnership. I'll have to make a note of that here and, and jot it down and see if there's any kind of partnership. Um, so we don't do a lot of machining at, at Amazon, so I don't know if that one's going to quite fit in, but the material warehouse uh, operation training program might be something that we could look into that would be helpful for anybody. Uh, if anything, maybe we can market it to our current employees if they're interested in that program and just support them while they're doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I know Gary Job Corps reviews their um, educational formats pretty regularly to make sure that they're in line with what's happening um, in all industries. Um, Hmm. Jeffrey, I think that is. Um, we'll be happy to reach out to you if you'll give us your email and we can look into that a little bit further for you if you don't mind. Uh, I know Gary is always willing to talk about great stuff like that. Let's see. Um, yeah. Let's see. What is your veteran and reservist hiring policy as a, as a serving, whoa, that moved, as a serving reservist? Would that conflict with working at Amazon? Thank you for your service, by the way. Yeah, yeah, thank you for your service. And, and like I said, I'm also a veteran. Uh, so we do a lot of veteran hiring as well. But we do have some folks uh, at our center that I know of for sure right now that are actually reservists and serving. And, and so we fully support whenever they have to go out, whenever they get orders to go on active duty or weekend work. Uh, they just need to provide us whatever documentation they have, their orders basically on, on that. Uh, and ideally, and I think we've always been, we've always seen that uh, military, whether active duty, reservists, or veterans, uh, make really good transition into Amazon as well. And so that's definitely, we support our veterans. Wonderful, thank you. Um, I see there's a question that just says health insurance. Uh, I, I, I'm not to get into the details of the weeds of, of our policies, but because they're, they're, yes, we have them, they're very robust. Um, uh, you know, medical, dental, vision, and there's different levels. Uh, I, for example, need to, I have glasses, obviously, and everyone in my family has glasses. So I have to get a slightly elevated uh, program, which is an option. Uh, and so uh, same with dentists. I mean, there's a, there's a kind of an entry level type of uh, insurance program, but then there's a little bit one that's a little bit more expensive, but generally speaking, not, 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 not that expensive at all. 
Um, and again, I just do it because of family members. And, and so, and I'm using myself as an example because it's hard to answer a question like that because everybody's health needs are, and families are gonna be very different. And so, but there's a broad spectrum of health insurance programs that we offer. You just gotta, again, know your own health and your family's health to be able to pick the one that's most effective for you. Fantastic, okay. A uh, long one. Does Amazon have an employee suggestion program whereby employees can earn money through suggestions <clears throat> from, that, that Amazon accepts? Mm -hmm. uh, and then they go on to discuss something like that. I think that they had at IBM. IBM. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that's a good question, too. I think I've heard the same thing that we do. We do have it. I, again, I think COVID kind of stifled some of our programs or at least put things on hold. But definitely we have uh, a suggestion opportunity. Uh, we have obviously open door policies whenever anybody wants to talk to the general manager. And if there's an idea there, uh, so I, not to get too long into this one, but uh, I do know that there was one. Uh, I, I think it might be on hiatus or on freeze right now just because of the COVID stuff, but uh, on, only because we don't have the structure that we used to have in place, but definitely anyone can bring that up. And I, I, I do think that from what I've seen, that there's an opportunity to get a, a compensation from that based on the idea, but there's a, a process, right? You have to determine what did the idea, cause generate save uh and then and then i don't know how they determine the uh the dollar amount that's given out to the employee that came up with the, the idea but like i said earlier we hire people for what's in between your ears so uh, ideas suggestions are always welcome that, that that's awesome to hear we are jumping into technology on this one are you ready okay we have a program and i believe they're um referencing gary we have a program in drone piloting any persons or any positions related Drone to that kind of training? Uh, so I don't know the answer to that question, to be honest. I know we do have uh, there's, I mean, you can always Google and you'll see that Amazon is going to be delivering packages with drones one day. Uh, I, I, maybe, maybe not. I don't know uh, for sure, but I do know that we have engineers that are always working on that technology. Um, just not where 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 I'm at the fulfillment centers. You know we don't we don't use that type of technology. It might very well be on just Amazon's uh, page, for example, if you go in there and search uh, some keywords. Because um, I'm sure one of the businesses is probably looking at uh, that more and more. Uh, if anyone wants to go in space, I think there's a program for that too, right? That Amazon is <laughs> is pursuing. I just wanted to let you guys know we're coming close to that that hour that we had promised. So I don't want to I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, I, thank you, Angel and Elva, both of you, so much for being here, and I we appreciate all of the information you guys gave. Um, this was really engaging. Um, so thank you both. Uh, do you guys have any last comments that you want to add before we we sign off? Uh, so, uh, I mean, I just thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to talk uh, a little bit about myself, a little bit about Amazon uh, and some of the opportunities that we have. I think, um, again, we're always looking for talent, uh, great talent. So uh, don't hesitate to uh, apply, get your foot in the door and then explore tons of opportunities. You just got to, again, take, take the approach that, that we talked about. Uh, get in there, make a name for yourself, be hungry. Uh, and it depends on how far you want to go. Thank you for having me. I, I love it. Elva, anything? <laughs> I want to say thank you to Angel. Thank you to Kara. I mean, uh, that was some exciting stuff. I know I'm positively motivated. I'm sure many of our um, watchers and listeners are too. Um, thank you for bringing all of your enthusiasm to the table. It's really nice to see. Yeah, thanks for the questions, uh, everybody. Uh, and hopefully took a little bit of knowledge and wisdom from, from anything that I might have said, but uh, uh, I know there's a star back behind me and it's not our year, but maybe we'll have good good uh, picks in the first round next year. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> great. We have a couple more questions coming in. Um, okay. um, Angel, if you can take a moment and just answer those off the side, I guess, once um, okay. we're done with the conversation, since we're out of time, is that acceptable? Yeah, so this one here is a CDL. 
So we do have uh, we do have positions that folks are uh, need to be CDO. We actually do a lot of training in house as well because uh, in, in the back of the warehouse, which is not what everybody sees, is where all the semis come in. And so we do have our own Amazon drivers that are actually back there as well, moving a lot of these uh, a lot of the uh, the containers around. And so we do hire folks that CDL. Uh, and then the next part, <clears throat> do you know of any business courses just uh, program management, Six Sigma, and socks being given. Uh, not internally, not not within Amazon anyway, but definitely there's, I know Texas State has some 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 good programs. Uh, Austin Community College has some programs. Um, um, I would add to that list maybe even Lean. Lean Manufacturing, Lean Six Sigma is our critical, um, are, are really good assets to have in your, uh, tools to have in your toolkit. Um, Kara, yeah. maybe you can talk to us a little bit about that real quick. All right. Those kinds of classes, maybe through um, Workforce Solutions? Anything there? Yes, uh, Workforce Solutions Rural Capital Area has some uh, online programming as well that you can access for free. And if you're qualified, um, there, there are different programs that we can use to upskill. Um, but you do have to meet certain qualifications, and we're happy to talk to you about them. Just come into our service centers, and, and we'll help you navigate that, that whole process. Um, but we are at 1 o'clock now, and I don't want to keep anyone longer than, than they should be. So thank you, everyone, for participating today. I really, really appreciate everyone's time. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you.